Welcome to the Saul's Newsstand News Review for October 25th, 2019. An op-ed from Time Magazine states, Americans deserve better than Speaker Nancy Pelosi's drug pricing plan. Sadly, the latest proposal by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi could put an abrupt stop to innovations in new drugs that serve small groups of people with rare diseases. While someone looking only at the overall financial impact might write off treatments for people in these categories, the families and friends of these patients understand that their existence is the difference between life and death for their loved ones. The government price controls embedded in Speaker Pelosi's draft would lead to reduced pharmaceutical production and innovation. Not only would this impact the well-being of vulnerable patients, it would raise the costs of health care programs operated by the federal government, which is too frequently the source of the problems, not the solution. Misguided good intentions can still lead to bad outcomes that risk people's lives. Speaker Pelosi's proposal dramatically increases the power of the federal government. Under her plan, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services would negotiate prices for up to 250 drugs a year. So the federal government that is now more than $22 trillion in debt is going to do a better job negotiating drug prices than the private sector? Lawmakers should work on better oversight of government programs that provide drugs to needy patients. The inability of the federal government to manage their current programs is a reminder of why turning over more responsibility to them is a bad idea. Better management of current oversight programs would help get new treatments to patients more efficiently. Targeting the high costs of prescription drugs for a small percentage of the overall population is a good idea. Turning a major portion of our health care system over to the federal government is not. The Hill reports, DEA unveils new rule on opioid manufacturers after criticism. A new policy from the Drug Enforcement Administration aims to improve the agency's quotas of controlled substances with the intent of preventing manufacturers from overproducing opioids. A proposed rule published Wednesday would further limit excess quantities of medications that might be vulnerable to diversion for illicit distribution and use, the agency said in a statement. The proposal comes after an internal watchdog report showed the agency allowed drug makers to increase production of opioids even as overdose deaths were skyrocketing. According to the report, the DEA permitted drug makers to increase their production of oxycodone, a highly addictive painkiller, by 400 percent between 2002 and 2013. Under the proposal, the diversion potential would be based on rates of overdose deaths and abuse, the overall public health impact related to specific controlled substances and may include other factors as appropriate, the agency said. The proposal would also implement provisions of the Support Act, legislation passed last year to address the nation's opioid epidemic. And finally, an article from Fox News reports, GOP lawmakers storm closed-door impeachment session as Schiff walks out. House Republicans, led by Representative Matt Goetz on Wednesday, essentially stormed a closed-door session connected to the impeachment investigation of President Trump, prompting House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff to suspend the proceedings in a remarkable scene. The standoff happened Wednesday morning after lawmakers held a press conference in which they accused House Democrats of a lack of transparency. Goetz, a member of the House Judiciary Committee, was kicked out of another session earlier this month where former Deputy Assistant to the President Fiona Hill faced questions behind closed doors. Goetz was told he could not attend because he is not part of the House Intelligence Committee, which is conducting the investigation along with the House Oversight and Foreign Affairs Committees. Republicans are not the only ones criticizing the investigation for its lack of transparency. Democratic presidential candidate Representative Tulsi Gabbard said Tuesday she was, quote, disappointed with the lack of transparency and warned it could, quote, undermine the integrity of the investigation. Democrats began calling witnesses for questioning behind closed doors after an anonymous whistleblower filed a complaint over a July 25th phone call between Trump and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. President Trump is accused of using military aid to Ukraine as leverage to pressure Zelensky into assisting investigations of alleged democratic collusion with Ukraine in the 2016 election 
as well as former Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter's business dealings with Ukrainian energy company Bersima Holdings. And that concludes your Saul's Newsstand News Review for October 25, 2019. For more political news faster, visit saulsnews.com.